Hello and welcome everybody. This is Chart Request Live. It is Thursday, February 15th. We do this show twice a week, one o'clock Eastern time, every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Stock Market TV. Joined as always today by my esteemed co-host and friend Patrick Donawilla of The Chart Report. Hey, buddy. Hey, I like that esteemed colleague. You get better at the intros over time. Yeah, yeah. So how are you doing? Week's almost over. It's been a weird week, right? I mean, I, I think I w, IWM tells the story the best as far as how weird this has been. Show this mess. This, yeah, this I mean, we had show. these nice three 1% up candles. I mean, you hardly ever see that kind of march higher like that. Then, I mean, I think we can call this a mini rug pull uh, just because all of a sudden just gap lower and ugly day. Uh, Tuesday, and then here we are, pretty much back to where we started. Uh, Zoom so. way in. I got two things on this yeah. real quick. So actually, zoom out first, show the whole base, and how many times sure. we've been here rejected. Yeah, I mean, two, 200 has been the level, which is it's ironic because it's 2,000 in the Russell 2000 index. It, but This is why we study trends, right? Okay, because we know from studying trends, looking back through history, that in a sideways market or a trendless market or a range bound market, you have the range drawn right there, trading and having a directional bias is very difficult. This is not a trending market. If you were to drop a 200 day moving average on this, it would be sideways. So yeah. what is you know just characteristic of these trendless markets? False starts, failed breakouts, look at the lower bounds, failed breakdowns, right? resolutions that are not resolutions at all. And we're right back in the box. Another thing that stands out is if you zoom way in, yeah, there's the 200 day. Now zoom way in, because because you just alluded to the nasty price action from now two days ago. Yeah. Spooky CPI, right? Yeah. That's how bad things start. Candles like that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, failing at a range, could have called this a bull trap, yep. right? This is how bad things start, but you never want to make too big of a deal over a single day's price action, right? And we and we have this concept of follow through, which I think the CMT curriculum does a really, really good job at banging into all of our heads. You know, follow through is really important. We yeah. need another red candle to confirm that negative action from the prior day. Instead of that, we got a beautiful green candle and now follow through on that one. So what happened the other day was spooky, right? And, and we were sitting here, I was running short-term rate of changes. This was the worst move since like 2020 or no, it was actually, I think like 2022 uh, because we, we peeled back some of those losses towards the end of the day. Yeah. We didn't get the follow through at all. And that's really the big takeaway here. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point there. Uh, you know, you always want to look for that confirmation, but that was a tough day. You know, that was, they definitely, like you said, that's how bad things start. Uh, and it looks like it looked like we made so much progress and we gave it all back. And uh, we gave back three days of progress in one day. Well, now, But now it's the opposite. All of that damage from the other day is now completely repaired. Yep. Look Love at the roller coaster. Throw up, throw up XLI quick, Pat. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's let's do that one. Like one really bad day. And, you know, look at you now, market leader. Look at you now. Look at that. I would call it an abandoned baby, honestly. Uh, one of the more bullish patterns. Yeah. And it's it, the psychology that makes it so bullish is the same as a bull trap or a yeah, trap breakdown, oh. something like that. You you get everyone on one side all of a sudden, and then it just rips back. <laughs> Great point. A hundred percent. All right. That's awesome. We're just, you know, before we just ramble on about chart patterns all day, um, let's jump into it. All right. Starting with the emails, Josh, only one email, guys. I, I don't mind that. I That's OK. That means yeah. we get to spend more time with the chat. The people yeah. who showed up. Oh, also programming note, um, everybody, we only have so many screens I actually downsized. I went from three screens to two screens this year. Did you know that? I, um, I don't hate that. More I desk space. Yeah. You know, it's, Howard, it's... Howard actually taught me once. Uh, I showed him a picture of my setup and he was just like, man, you got to simplify. Just simplify yeah. less screens. Yeah. And you know what? That was the best advice I got. Some of the best advice I got. 
I love it. Right. I'm on, I'm on like the simplicity theme. Less is more. And it's funny because there are parallels there to what we do. The technical. Totally. Yeah, uh, totally. Anyway, quick programming note. There are a number of chats and this show is viewed on a number of different platforms. I can only monitor the YouTube chat. Right. So if you're on Twitter or somewhere else, uh, get to the YouTube chat um, and, and, and we'll take requests from there. So I don't want to miss anything. All right. The first question is about Intel. What do you guys think about a short position? It recently broke below the 50 day simple, possibly some downside targets. I am already in the trade entered on 213. So just two days ago and entered on the weakness. Uh, 4338 stop at 46. Stop love at 46. Love, yeah. I love the detail. Wow. Okay. You know what? I don't, I don't hate that idea. I think it might be, might end up being a better trade maybe on a relative basis. I, I don't know if you want to get that fancy and short it against something else, but to me, th it, this is kind of a potential top. We'll see if if this is even, you know, a right shoulder or not here, but this could be something here, and it, it is kind of getting into this sloppy mess over here, all this overhead supply, uh, these, you know, former lows, and just, just a messy, messy place here. Um, so, you know, like I said, you want to see this actually make a right shoulder. This could go on and make a new high, uh, in which case that's definitely not a head and shoulders. Um, but what, what did he say? He said 46 he, for his stop. He's got to stop at 46. Uh, yeah, stop at 46. Is that where the gap is? If this thing starts filling this gap, you can't you can't be short, right? Oh, good, good call. Um so that was the earnings gap right there, 45, yeah, 46 is in a bad place. I mean, that's, yeah, it would be just starting to fill that gap. So the, yeah, zoom in there. Yeah, and, and that's the formula. I think that's a good place for your stop. Um, you know, maybe don't put it right at 46.00, but around there. Um, and then for targets, I would be looking down here, like these former highs and this little thing right here. Yeah, that's not that much of a downside. Maybe maybe you play it down here to 32, 38. That's, it's tough. I mean, it's not giving you that much downside. I don't know how short-term he's thinking. Um, but yeah, I would say you'd be looking for 38 if it's short-term or maybe 32. But um, yeah, that's... I, what do you I, think? Like, I like the vehicle, right? This is like... The, one of the biggest secular laggards in the market, right? So True. you're looking short something. True. Cool. What I don't love is, you know, just shown here off the 2022 lows, not only would I say this reversal has completed and the primary trend is, is now higher, there's a very clear pattern of higher highs, higher lows. And this was probably the biggest drawdown we've seen from Intel in a while. It's a bull market. If the dip gets bought, I would just keep it tight. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think if that gap starts getting filled, like right here, right now, I would be thinking, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, you'll know pretty quick, right? So that's why 46 is probably a decent spot for your, you know, if it starts filling, you're going to get stopped out. So that's nice. And you know what? I do. I agree with you. The vehicle, it's like, it's not like you're shorting SMCI here. You're shorting a big old laggard. It's yeah. <laughs> just a big clunky laggard. Um, yeah. All right, next, NASDAQ, multi-month trade, NDAQ. Oh, NDAQ? Like the, oh, the, the, the company, NASDAQ. Is that what he's looking at? Steve? Yes, yeah, oh. sorry. Dude, uh, wow, controls. you know, don't really look at NASDAQ, the company, too often. Um, Financials, though, financials. Is it in, it's a capital markets? Is that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Financial data, stock exchange, the capital markets, depending on who the data provider is. Yep. So it's kind of in a range. Maybe maybe this will form into a base. At, at this point, it's kind of a range. Um, you got clear support down here at 47, 48. Right here. Found support there this summer. And then also, um, was that spring 2022? This point, um, but Pat, hold on. He yeah. said multi-month. Multi-month. 
So we're that to me means here. one to one to three months. Oh, okay. So you're looking at like around here, May. For a time frame that short, the bottom line on this one is it's it's in this big range. There are other stocks that are not in ranges that are trending. And with such a short time frame, I don't see much directionally here. It's a mess. Yeah, yeah that's that's a great point. You know, for your time frame, it's not going to give you too much, or at least it just not, you know, it's not like it's breaking out or something like that. It's still one of those charts that you need, you need to give it time. But let's say you had a little longer time frame. I would be looking to 63 first. And then you're looking at all-time highs around 72. But at that point, see, I would almost rather wait for the base to complete and then put on a three-month trade if it's breaking out. You know what I mean? Uh, but there's no real catalyst, or at least I don't see a real catalyst here um, for a trade. So that's tough with that sort of time frame. You know, it is a secular uptrend. It's a really nice primary uptrend there. So if this was like a long-term trade that you wanted to get into. I mean, look, you could see this is probably the biggest, messiest drawdown for this stock in the last decade. So uh, I don't hate that idea. I think that's a that's a decent one. Yeah, pretty I much agree. worse since the great financial crisis, which is the case for a lot of things out there. Um, but I, yeah, I would, I would rather wait for it to break out. 72 gets you to 87. That's a nice trade for you. And it could work in that three month time frame. But uh, for here, it's just kind of a mess. No man's land. TRGP to all-time highs. TRGP. Looks like it might be there. This, this is an MLP. Okay. What do you think of MLPs? I hate K1s. They're not for me. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the tax form that you have to Here, put with, right? It's one of those things where, like, as, you know, been doing this long enough, it's one of those groups where every time I do it or did it, I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> uh, and I, and I, I never learned. Right. So last year, coal stocks are awesome. I'm looking at this ARLP. It had like a 12, 13% yield at the time and it looked good. It looked, looked right. Um, so I buy that and I'm out of it now. I probably bought it like that last peak in like late 23, uh, got stopped out pretty quickly. And then again, was like, why am I doing this with these MLPs? <laughs> so anyway, this one looks a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do kind of look similar though, right? Like just very tight, tight range action. And then when they go, they go. So this one looks like it's perking up a little bit today, uh, this week, I mean, haven't really been following it. So I don't know too much, but um, I think you want to play it back to those former highs that we were just looking at there. This all the way up to 130. That's what he uh, said. Yeah. 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 So that's that's where I'd be looking. I wouldn't let it go below 81. Um, yeah. That's you know, the former highs, also the recent lows. So just from looking at it, it kind of looks like a leader. Maybe, maybe check out the relative trends against yeah. energy, maybe a AMLP. Right, because most energy stocks right now not making new highs. Hey, is. you like that? Outperforming its peer group. What's the yield here? I'll check uh, it. Actually. You yeah. you stay on that. But yeah, I mean that's what you want, right, Pat? Oh yeah, that's a beautiful relative trend. I'm glad you made me. Uh, glad you made me do that one. Oh, you know, Steve, I've been really liking the ascending triangle lately. I think it's yeah. a nice pattern. <laughs> big triangle guy. I'm a big, tri <laughs> big triangle guy. Good pattern. Uh, 2.25, which a lot of people might hear, if you know anything about these midstream operators, these, these, a, lot, a lot of these yields are double digits. So you might think, mm, I don't like that. It's a lot smaller than its peers. But sometimes that high yield, you know, you know how we feel, Pat. I know how you feel. Yeah, you. there's a sweet spot for you. There's a sweet spot. You see it too right. big of a yield, you start asking questions. I know. That's you. right. So this one makes me feel warm and fuzzy, like that sweet spot feeling inside. Uh, I like the 2.25, particularly for what industry group it's in. Um, yeah. All right. You want to move on here? Yeah. Not a bad one, though. Yeah, I like that. EMR, please. Hey, Kevin. Emerson, right? You know my middle name's Emerson, Steve? Is it really? 
Yeah. True story. You should buy the stock. I know. I know. Uh, and Sean's, Sean's son is named Emerson, I think. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, so. So we have an affinity bias for this one. Um, a beautiful chart, though. Beautiful chart. I think it's an industrial, right? One of those. Say. Yeah, diversified industrial. Whatever that means. <laughs> Could mean a lot of things, right? Industrials are already di diversified, so it's like. Um, what, a what a beautiful chart. Love these gaps. Totally, yeah. This thing, uh, you know, n nice momentum thrust just last month or last yeah. week. 120 or 106 gets you 126. I think it's that simple. Um, and then, like you know, don't be in it under 100. That's a nice psychological level. This is this is a nice trade, actually. Um, you know, it's uh, not the highest beta name. It's not super microcomputer or something like that. But it's, zoom, in, zoom in to the patterns you're marking up so everybody yeah. can see it. And then, yeah. but you said 100. Why, why 100? I mean, that's pretty clean, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I like psychological levels like that. Um, you know, maybe you don't put it right at 100.00. But uh, look at this, right? That's exactly where the gap was. Uh, it looks like it gapped up after the recent earnings last week. You put a, you put a stop right there and you walk away. I think... Uh, and then, you know, you put an alert at 126. I think this one could work. I like it, it. It's, one of those set, it's one of those setups where you, you do have two very logical levels of interest. So you can scale in and out, right? And use one as like a, a trigger and the other one as confirmation. Yeah. All right. What's next? That's a pretty chart. Beautiful. Pfizer. Yeah. Uh, Pfizer what a dog. <laughs> what a dog. Man, and, and this one, I always come back to this, is this is why it's impossible to trade off headlines, because if you had told me that there would be a global pandemic and one company would come up with the vaccine uh, and you asked me how they'd be trading, I would not think like this. But uh, so, yeah, this is a great lesson in not to trade the headlines. But it's also a great lesson in uh, imagine the healthcare industry, particularly the biotech and pharmaceutical industry. Imagine a world where, and Patrick, I know it's counterintuitive uh, to think that you come up with the vaccine, your stock doesn't do well, but it's actually how we see it happen time and time again. Go look at Gilead's share price after they cure hepatitis, okay? Oh. Companies have no incentive to cure things. That's so Cures Cures are not good money makers. That is depressing. It is. Anyway, yeah. uh, logical level though. Oh yeah. Like I'm if you're gonna, I don't know why I'm drawing this. It's, go for it. If <laughs> you already happened, but so yeah, logical level. I think you could take a swing here. Um, yep. You could put a stop at under this. I mean, that's kind of a fail breakdown here. We we did pierce through those uh, COVID lows. Yeah. Like, but, but we're saying that in the context of like, if the, if this is your thing, if you like catching <laughs> falling knives, right? Like if, if you love buying some of the worst stocks, then you could do it here. Right? <laughs> I mean, you did get the clothes below, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right here. Like know what game you're playing. Um, and if this thing goes against you, get out. But very clear level you're risking two bucks here on a pretty large cap very established name yeah uh, you play that back to like yeah I, I don't want to say play it all the way back to the neckline because that's but you could i mean yeah I, I would maybe play it back to like the vwap vwap sorry how do you say it steve you say i mean it? it's a trade so i think that's too much yeah this is a counter trend move we're looking for Right. Yeah, and you know what? I'd almost... It's, go ahead, go ahead. It's a dead cat bounce. So you don't want to be too greedy when you're trading against the trend. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but interesting level there. We'll see if it can stand up. I would rather I would rather wait for it to kind of prove to me that the, that the reversal is actually happening or that there's a good chance that it will happen. 
So I'd rather yeah, like, see it like break that, right? And and you get like some bullish momentum divergence. I'd rather see that or or even better breaking these highs here, these December highs. That's even more confirmation. But then again, you're letting the trade kind of get away from you at that point. If you were going to pay me to like make the bullish argument for this one, you <laughs> you would say things like, you know, it's a bull market and stocks are doing great. And this is Pfizer. It was a former Dow component. It's one of the largest healthcare companies, one of the largest stocks in the world. You did a um, pretty good job. <laughs> you want to make, you know, do you want to make the bet that Pfizer is going to be breaking down to new multi-year lows, completing a massive top in this beautiful bull market? And we've seen that. Like, if you go to Disney, yeah, show the relative trend. It's a dog. It's a dog. Yeah, absolutely uh, dog. If you go to Disney, like, we were saying things like this about Disney. That's not even a fair comp, though. Disney? Yeah. So, so Disney, uh, Zoom, yeah, see the support level? Ooh, right like, here. Hated, yeah. Hey. Hated, hated this chart. Hated, you know, I think... It's terrible. I don't love, I hate everything that's going on here. Um, <laughs> Nelson Peltz and like Iger are like fighting with each other. Like it's a disaster. So, but we were saying like, you are you going to make the bet that Disney, Disney, America's, you know, favorite brand is going to be completing this massive top breaking down to multi-year lows in a bull market for stocks? I think it's the same thing for Pfizer. Man, there was this old family guy episode where they actually made fun of the stock uh, chart of Disney. And they showed Michael Eisner, the CEO at the time, sliding yeah. down. It was like a ride at Disney World. The stock price, he would just like slide down it. That's um, funny. I'll try to find the clip. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, really good point here. This one uh, kind of worked for you, but absolute right, yeah. chart yeah. too. Next up, Valet. Valet, man. This one is always on the high volume list. Have you noticed that? Uh, ooh, Donovan here. I know Straza doesn't like wedges, but it's an interesting setup. He wants, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I That's like it. I like the wedge. Pat it's likes a little the big. Wedge. It's a little bit big, right? Um, I don't know if you could really call it wedges. Um, you know, typically, kind of like the bull flags that you were talking about last week, you want them to be kind of short within a trend. This is kind of messy. So, you know, and the, the thing about wedges and triangles and pennants is they can be messy to trade because, you know, it could it could break an upper bound and then the pattern kind of shifts and morphs and um, they're best kind of shorter term patterns. But that being said, not bad here. At least you have some clear boundaries to trade off of. Looks like it, it wants to test this one, though, again. And it's really not a wedge, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Wedge is supposed to be reversal patterns. This is just a massive range. Right. And it is it is like a narrowing pattern. Like I, I, I see, you know, it's probably trying to build up some sort of move or trend, but um, I, I'd wait for it to break the 16 here. 16 gets you to 19. Then you're looking at 21. Just kind of play these peaks, right? So 19, 21, right. 23. Um, those are kind of your levels to watch, just these former highs. And, and then... And yeah. I wouldn't let it go below 12, though. No, nope, I would keep yeah, totally. <laughs> because because you could if you were to zoom out to the 2020 lows and draw it like that with within the, the context of the structural trend off the 20 lows, that's a top. Right. That's that's a reversal pattern to me. And oh, if those lows yeah. go like right. you're saying, yeah, zoom in and show. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason why, if we're going to just be pattern nerds for a second, the reason why it's not a wedge is that lower trend line would have to be downward sloping. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. Next up, AVAX, please. Hey, Sam. So he's talking about the avalanche. Yeah. Ooh, when you're good, you're good. Thanks for talking my book, Sam. <laughs> see how I teach these guys, Pat? You do. You do. Uh, let's take a look at Solana after this real quick, too. But um, this one, not bad. Not bad. I think you kind of have... Inverse head and shoulders. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, you know where I was going with that. <laughs> hell yeah. No, I, I, I haven't. I'm not even going to draw it, but you, you see it, right? Uh, yeah. Shoulder, head, shoulder. Zoom uh, in and show the pattern that you're speaking to. Absolutely. No, I will draw it. I will. Nice little base here. This has been a leader too, Pat, like off the uh, Q4 lows from last year. Have you been trading this one or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm involved. Very involved. 
You're involved in the AVAX, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you could even call the neckline right here, right where it is, this 42 level. Um, and then this is kind of your confirmation level, 48. And that would complete this nice two-month base. Maybe it's three months by the time it gets there. Yeah. Um, and then you fib it out. And And crypto markets right now are like, kind of like stocks. Last year, and, and I guess and more the way this year. at least Bitcoin. <laughs> but it's like, right. So, like last year, the Mag 7 argument or narrative, you know, ignore whether it's true or not, they were the best stocks. Um, and they were driving everything right now, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, even now, Ethereum just recently, very, very short term, but mostly Bitcoin. It's been hard to outperform Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin's like the Mag 7 or the, the NVIDIA. Eventually, point, you would expect that participation to expand. And Avalanche is not like a small or micro cap stock, right? It's more like just another large cap, right? If, if, if Bitcoin is Microsoft or NVIDIA, then Avalanche is like ServiceNow. Ah, I, I like think it's that. I like that analogy. <laughs> it's very good. Wow, look at that. You're right at the view app from the peak. Actually, you're above it. That's very nice. Um, yeah, so 15 billion, which is sizable for crypto. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I think 50, nice psychological level there, too. That's important for these, you know, kind of new names. This thing hasn't been around for more than five years, even. So, you're looking at 64. I think if it breaks 50, 50 gets you to 64. That's a decent trade. And that also coincides with this big old mess back from when it first came out over here. The ICO, is that what they call them, Steve? Yeah. Yeah, man. ICO. Um, so I think you want to be out at that point because you're going to run into all this overhead supply, potential sellers there. So, but not bad. Shaping up really nicely on a short term uh, and longer term basis. Really good. And I like what you were saying there about kind of if, you know, if we are in a crypto bull market, which it certainly kind of seems like we are, then you should see these start to participate a little bit more, maybe even start outperforming, which would be really impressive. You going to do the Solana quick? Oh, yeah, let's do the Solana. I actually, why don't you talk about it? I'll just I'll pull up the chart. But I know uh, you've it's, been following this one way. Closer. No, I think, you know, you know what? If we're just keeping it relevant to the Avalanche request, these guys move together. Similar stuff, smart contract world stuff, I think. Uh, whatever it is, they're in the same basket, right? So this I had marked up just like you marked up Avalanche with that inverse head and shoulders um, mm -hmm. last yeah. week, and, and it was resolving higher. I think this is a nice roadmap for what Avalanche is likely to do, right? Solana's basically just about there at those old highs, right, from, from late last year. That's where yeah. Avalanche is headed for sure. Yeah, this is like a one hour chart. You could totally, you know, draw the same pattern in there. Like you say all the time, it's about the essence of the pattern and it's totally there. Uh, this thing breaks 124, 125. It's off to the races, I think. NASDAQ Poppy. NASDAQ Poppy. What, what, he's, what doing a, he's doing a Phil Perlman. He wants a quarterly chart. Of a quarterly? Of what? I love that. That is so zen of you, NASDAQ Poppy. Uh, Oxy. Occidental Petroleum quarterly oh, looks good. Short term we were talking breakout. About this one, weren't we, Steve? Uh, well, hold on see. now. So, all right. So, Poppy's getting fractal on us because this this sentence is confusing me. Short term breakout after earnings today, but you're looking at a quarterly chart. So, align your time frame with your mindset, right? If if you're looking at a quarterly chart, you're thinking of owning this thing for years. Well, let's talk about the structural trends, at least the primary. Don't tell me that you're worried about what happened at earnings, right? You're, you're Berkshiring this thing, you're just <laughs> Berkshiring. Right. right? No, yeah, but no, no, you're absolutely right. So NASDAQ Poppy, if you're looking at a quarterly chart, I'm assuming that your time frame is long, like more than a year, at least I'm thinking at least one to three or longer, then you shouldn't worry about earnings. Just worry about the trend. The earnings reactions will follow the trend on balance. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I'm I'm getting ready to just give up on this trade because <laughs> real real quick, we'll we'll dig into it and we'll talk about why. <laughs> and we you know we've been calling this the Buffett floor, and yeah. it's pretty obvious why because every time it gets down to that 55 level, Uncle Warren shows up, purchases. Steve can talk to that more than I can because he watches that very closely. Um, but you know, each time the following high gets lower and lower so it's almost like there's less and less of that bullish energy yeah. every time he shows up and every time it bounces off that level so you know it, but every time it comes back down he shows up and buys more so everyone who's buying everyone who's in this trade is like oh yeah buffett's got our back he's there but it's like okay but he's also buying for decades right he, he can sit in this thing for decades most people are looking just to make a little trade there we're, we're just minnows swimming swimming along with the you know the giant shark so um i think a lot of those minnows are going to end up getting eaten here and i'm just i'm getting ready to give up on this one but obviously you want to play it back to the top end of the range first around 75 then that would kind of complete this massive, massive pattern here. So that's, uh, yeah, then you're looking at 86, 87 for the all-time highs. Oh, this no, those aren't even the all-time highs. 112, 113. Wow. Um, but, yeah, you want to play those kind of short-term peaks, and those are kind of your targets. Those are your reference points um, once you're in the trade, if it starts working out. And you know what? It is kind of holding up there, I think. While it hasn't broken out, it just it also hasn't broken down. That's why it's just been such a frustrating one. Okay, you just said it. You just hit on <laughs> what a frustrating name this has been. I think there's a theme to our show today, which is again, don't trade these ranges, you know, if you have any material time frame, because they're just a mess, right? Like, like Pat, Pat's basically saying we keep buying the floor. We keep buying the support in this thing for years now and never hitting a price target. That's opportunity cost. Think right. of all the things we could have bought and made money on. So yeah. I'm with you, like tired of it. And you know what? That's great for sentiment. It is. It which is. is what it's one of those things where it's like, I hate this group right now. I, I, I'm just done with energy. And then the other side of my brain is like, dude, you should, you should put on some energy leaps. Right, right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, okay. hey, that's, that's the battle you're constantly playing, right? Like we joke because it's funny, but it's funny because it's true, right? You have to constantly have that, you know, good, good angel and the bad angel. And they right. have to constantly be fighting with each other. Way in um, the evidence. Uh, right. Um, you know, Char Charlie Munger had a great quote among many, but one of them was like investing or trading the same uh, is that it takes this weird combination of aggression and also uh, being conservative and, and being, um, you know, risk averse at times. He had the best, best quotes. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know you're a big quote guy. So Patrick, quote guy. Patrick digs through an archive of the best quotes, like literally every day. Oh, yeah. So who is who's the most quotatious in the world of finance? Or you're covering everybody. In who's the, the world of finance? You know, uh, Howard Marks has some really good ones. Um, Seth Klarman. Mm. Um, but then you know, I like like a bunch of philosophers too. Bertrand Russell has great ones. Socrates. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. Yeah, and then there's everybody's some favorite some that totally get misattributed too. Albert oh, Einstein. I know. Um, Keynes. Uh, you know the. What is it? The, the, um, um, the irrational one? Yeah, markets can stay irrational longer than you can remain solvent, that one. I think that's actually him, but um, yeah. Okay. That is John Maynard Keynes? I think so, yeah. Because it's one of the greatest market quotes ever. It is, it's true. So, what is it for everybody so you that know, they know what we're talking about? It reminds me of that other quote. It's like, being early is equivalent to being wrong, right? In the yeah. markets. Uh, kind of wait, so... Thing. So markets can stay uh, irrational longer than you could stay solvent. Yep. Solid. Yep. Right. So CLSK, short-term trade, realize it's primarily a beta trade on Bitcoin. Yeah. Which is in a bull market. Do, do you not want beta? I mean, JC. Yeah, well, I, know, I know you've been following the miners and this one in particular mm -hmm. pretty closely. So what do you think of this? It's great. They just had earnings. Everybody loved it, clearly. Uh, this stock has what, like tripled 
in a month. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to buy it here? Uh, we were just talking about at the top of the show. I closed my position in Bitcoin miners that I was in pretty big coming into the week um, yesterday. So I don't, it, this is really, we got to know your time frame for this one, right? Uh, Rahul, if you're here. You know, um, because I don't want to buy this for, for like a short term trade. You know, I think it was Caleb said it best. You know, people keep trying to bet against these miners, and there's kind of this narrative that they won't be able to hold up after after having and stuff like that. And they just keep they keep proving people wrong and keep working higher. So yeah. What do you think of it as far as like a from a fundamental way or using it as part of a, a thesis for crypto? Uh nothing on the fundamentals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe fundamentals wasn't the correct word. But for me. Yeah. Not for this one, at least, right? Um, I, I don't even know what a happening is, okay? So for for in terms of a vehicle, it's very good, right? Like, we know we have some proven high beta vehicles in the equity market to play a crypto bull market. Coinbase, MicroStrategy, uh, Mara, uh, CLSK, I think, has been one of the preferred Bitcoin miners, right? So any one of those have been working great and they'll give you three, five, 10 X the beta of Bitcoin itself. And wow. in a bull market, that's what you want. You want the juice. Yeah. This would be yeah. That, but I'd rather buy on weakness back to that first um, support zone that you drew. Yeah. I mean, Steve, a week ago today, we were, uh, we were about to go on this show and you, you go, Pat, you got to buy the Mara calls, buy the Mara calls. You told me the exact strike, the ex everything. I didn't listen to you. And uh, um, I've been kicking myself all week specifically for that very trade. You know, it's like, we're just like humans. I but like, we even, but drew, I, this, we even I, drew this view app here and we were like, oh man, that's how yeah. you play it. You, if, you get the breakaway gap here too. Oh gosh. When I put on a big risky, you know, uh, a big, a big I, risky. I want my, I want my buddies to be involved. So, so like we could, we, I could call you at night and be like, do you want to check, you checking the futures? I hope we don't agree <laughs> <No>. tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shared, shared misery, shared fun. Right. Right. Uh, you don't want to be alone. Celsius. We got to catch up here. Uh, Celsius, the stock or I'm skipping around C E L H. Okay. Is there we, are go we are going so slow today. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, we suck. Hello. Hello. Hey, Sean. Hi, Goodell. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Thanks, Sean. I like this. This has been a, this has just been such a clean, um, just leader. And just, it's, it's almost like, like the new monster. I, I know I'm probably not the only one thinking of it like that, but like monster energy, one of those stocks that's just randomly one of the best performing stocks over like the 10 year you know what you you zoom back a, a long ways you'd think it was the amazons and the googles of the world these companies doing innovative things nope it's these companies selling poison water and domino's pizza and makeup alta you know things like that um so true yeah so true and this one we don't have the same price history you're talking about stocks that have been leaders for decades uh but so far been a ridiculous leader yeah, look at this. This is over the past decade. Wow, just and base after base after base, and this is just like kind of the most recent one, right? Um, just I mean, we could. I'm not going to draw them all right now, but you you, you see what I'm talking about. Um, so this one it's above sixty nine. Then you fib it out. Um, this is a nice, nice base within a primary uptrend. It's been basing since September. What is that? Like six months. It's a nice base. Yeah, and you kind of got the confirmation today, right? Because you had the breakout yesterday, and now we're kind of getting follow through here. Uh, we talked about at the top of the show follow through, right? And how important that is. Um, eighty-one, seventy, or sixty-nine gets you eighty-one. Not bad, or eighty-two even. Um, I really this, like this one. Yeah. Yeah. At this point. I think you want on strength above last year's highs, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, like like I'm saying weakness back towards the 62. It's just depending on your time frame. That's what are we talking like? Maybe 10 percent trade there. That's not. Oh, you're saying you're saying buy like a retest, you're saying? Yeah, because right now we're yeah. in this range between the 62 uh, and the old highs. Yeah, no, I, I, I would rather kind of buy on a pullback here. Three percent dip buy around 62. Yeah. Yeah, either works. So I'm getting mm, they split this thing. I, I got to be picky here. I'm I'm gonna go on down the line and and uh, try Did to you pick. Know that they favorite. split it. What? I have no idea. Yeah. Like you, I don't, I don't, I don't like the poison water. I don't drink this shit. Like, you know, I, I I used to drink it. I just haven't. I kind of lost my taste for it. I don't. I won't. You couldn't pay me to drink a Red Bull. <laughs> like not a sip, not because I hate feeling like, you know, like someone just like poured cocaine in my drink <laughs> also because it tastes awful. Like they taste yeah, disgusting. Not great. Not great. Ugh. But people are drinking it. Red like, Bull vodka. Oh God. To make you shake hands, get sweaty. Things are awful. Oh, man. How about KROS? Yeah, and then we'll uh, and then we'll do DraftKings because they have earnings tonight, which I'm so excited for. Ooh. So excited for this aftermarket entertainment. The DraftKings call tonight. Coinbase, Coinbase. That's tonight. Stepping up to the plate. Oh, about how bad analysts have been on Coinbase. How about that? I mean, well, it's, it's absolutely an easy one to hate, right? It's an easy one to pick on. I mean. I think it was JP Morgan today. You should be embarrassed. They they upgraded the stock from a sell to a neutral and maintained an $80 price target. That's 50% below the current price. Really? How can you upgrade the stock with a price target that implies a yeah, 50 no, no, no. You know what that means. You know what that means. That means we were wrong. <laughs> we got to we got to do something about it without it's like we were up. it was it was like we were wrong, but we're bitter. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but we're still <laughs> keeping it eighty. <laughs> but it's still <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh god. Uh, wait. So what? What? Which? Uh, okay. This one. Gross. Sixty gets you sixty-eight. Love uh, it. 67. Yeah. And then if you get to sixty-seven, I you know maybe then, then it's complete, right? Then let it go, right? Yep. Um, maybe probably will get some initial rejection. Maybe I shouldn't say probably, but. Might get some initial rejection, but if it gets above that, that's uh, that's very nice. The best thing about this one is it's a biotech, and it doesn't look like most biotechs. No, look, it, this is this is a strong stock uh, for its group. Yeah, last All right, uh, one more DraftKings, then we're out. Wait, I got a two o'clock meeting. Otherwise, we would hang out. We would hang out all day. We had to make up for it. We did a short show on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, DraftKings. Yeah. So, you, I mean, you want to break this one down? You you have definitely been following this one more. By the I way, have you heard of the stock RSI? And it, not talking about relative strength index, RSI. Uh, it's oh, a, the other gambling? Yeah, it showed up on my thing, but I know you've been following some of these gaming stocks, and this was a gaming stock. It's not gambling, is it? Is it gambling? Oh, do these it guys is. make the machines when you sit at the bar at the no. You know, I think they own some like online gambling site or something like that. Okay. But anyway, we don't have to look at it too much. It, but not not a bad little reversal base here. Could could play it up to uh nine, ten dollars here. But do you see what happens time. when when these new mega trends kind of take shape? Like betting on sports in America is a new thing for the most part. This is a huge industry, like the TAM, right? Like Silicon yeah. Valley guys over there where you live, you guys say TAM. The total addressable market for not not all of online gaming, just sports betting is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Th this is an area everybody wants to be in. So everybody's talking about these stocks now. ETFs are popping up. What's the one that just came public? Uh, the FanDuel guys just came, or they listed in the U.S. now. So... Big money here, uh, and Wall Street is paying attention. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what and what a comeback this one has had, right? Throw up the um, earnings on your chart, the earnings icons. Let's just see how it's how it's done. Because 
this is a company that over the past few years, you know, you know how I feel about it. This one is like Uber for me. Every time I go to their earnings report, you know, or check out the numbers, listen to the call, love the management team here too. Um, just like Uber, they're always beating. They're always raising. It's always a great report. It's always a positive reaction. Oh, this one wasn't, but, but no, uh, you're, you're, to your point. Yeah. The last few have been really nice. Keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. We're just going no, to, the, the point day. is, yeah. I mean, that has been the catalyst, right? And we got earnings today. So, you know, definitely, it's definitely going to move in one direction. Or another. Do you think that where, where do you, where would you kind of expect to see this move on a positive reaction and a negative today? Well, so, so if you go back and do what Pat just did and look at it uh, on your own, I was doing this the other day, sometimes you get the initial sell and then it's like this automatic reaction higher, right? So it'll yeah. be like, you know, stocks down five, 10% in the morning. And then by the you know end of the week, it's back at new highs. So, those are some of the most bullish. I think yeah, you almost want to see it gap down. I know you don't want to see it gap down, but if it gap. gaps down and then reclaims all that, right. the, the, the are, you gonna be are some of my favorite uh, patterns yeah. out there. Like when you One get that, just totally off guard, bull trap, bear trap, whatever you want to call it. I agree with you. An engulfer or Maribos, it like it's, yeah. it's the best stuff. Engulfing prior action is a, is a big thing from a, from a, a, sh a short-term fractal uh, perspective, right? So I think with DraftKings, it's tough. It's before earnings. Who knows? The earnings have tended to be positive at least, uh, you know, maybe not, like I said, the morning after the earnings, but a couple days after the reactions have been good. And I worry that maybe this could be a runaway type of reaction just because of the price action we're seeing from other earnings reports. Have you been seeing all the breakaway gaps and the gap and goes and a lot um, of the yeah, stocks yeah, yeah. this week, last week. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of good reactions lately. And we just had the Super Bowl. We yeah. just had the Super Bowl. And this was the first time for a lot of people that they could just pull up their phone. And I'll tell you, there's just like a suite of ridiculous things you could do and bets you can make. And everybody's talking about it on social media and the internet. So this was, you know, it's going to be a massive quarter and they're probably going to talk about it on the call, right? And say like how great the Super Bowl was and people will be looking forward to those numbers coming out next um, quarter. So you might get, you might get a nice rip here. We'll see. The bottom line is the primary trend is beautiful and still pointed higher. Let's say it does react lower. Would you, you know, is this viable? Totally. Yeah. And then and below you know, there. You have a nice out here, right? You know, you know, you're wrong. I knew I yeah. kind of drew it like this, but you really could make the trade like this, where you put your stop here below this January gap up here. I don't know what happened there, but um, if it starts to fill that gap, then you know you're probably wrong. But yeah, I and it might not even give you a chance to get in here. It might not even get that pullback. All right. Well, it's two o'clock. We got to wrap it up. I got to hop. Two, it's over. It was this was fun, uh, as ever, as always, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks, Patrick, for the chart work. We yeah. will be back next Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, in the meantime, check us out on Stock Market TV for the morning show every morning, 8.30 to 10. Everybody have a great rest of your week uh, and a lovely weekend. Cheers. Thank you so much. Peace.